pivot. Welcome, 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 welcome. You are listening to Bras Fannies and Sports. I'm Spit Face, and I'm pl- and I'm pleased to be here. And we want to welcome our host, the First Lady of Sports Talk, Sonia Smith. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very excited about this show this morning, and you want to know why? We'll talk about it later. But no, I'll tell you why. Cause I oh, we'll talk about it. The, the the tease. The tease. Tease. Yes, we'll tease it. <laughs> All right. Now, this week on Shout Out, we have music from Will Downing. I I have not heard that name in a long time. Will he find his shining star or get the cold feel of the mute button? That's right. uh, I put it like this. You may have props, but we see how you do on Shout Out. First Lady, we're ready. What you saying? Okay, well, before we say what I'm saying, I am so pleased that Will Downing is going to have some new music because he is one of my favorites of all time. But anyway, each week we try to... I I do have a hint of (laughs) biasness. Or or it could go the other way. Sometimes sometimes that 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 standard can get raised and it's like, oh, man, you're trying to meet an old standard. Uh Uh-oh, we shall see. (laughs) All right. Each week we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world, not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something so we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea, fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The Boston Celtics wish they could fly Far, far away from a game to loss handed to them by the Miami Heat. Are the Celtics being outcoached, outplayed, and being left discombobulated? Is the Heat versus Nuggets matchup starting to sound interesting? If the Celtics get swept or suffer a gentleman's sweep, is the coach going fishing with Doc Rivers? Is it time for Spolstra to get some serious props? What does Heat legend Dwayne Wade say? Marvelous Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., and the Steve Miller and Bad are asking, what you saying? Oh, my goodness, spit face. Yes, Eric Spolstra <laughs> is running rings around the Celtics coach Joe Mazzula. <laughs> Mazzula. Hell yeah, he's being outcoached. <laughs> I mean, he is really being outcoached. I mean, the Celtics, let's, I'm going... To the first game, I know we're in game two, getting ready to get played game three, but I have to go to the first game because we haven't talked about these games yet. The Celtics didn't score for, I think it was like six and a half minutes. The Heat won the third quarter in the first game, 46 to 25. Missoula never called a timeout during the Heat massive run. The only timeout that was taken in that fourth, I mean, that third quarter was a mandatory TV stoppage that, you know, they had to take the TV stoppage. And he claims he used the two timeouts in the first quarter and didn't want to use the third timeout in the third quarter. And he said they needed to figure it out. Well, are you kind of crazy how to figure it out? Well, damn it, they didn't figure it out because, I mean, they was completely blown off the court in the third quarter. They had a nine-point lead going into the third quarter, and they didn't score for six and a half minutes of the third quarter. So, I mean, why are you not calling a timeout to stop at least the flow of the Miami Heat? The Miami Heat scored a record 46 points in that quarter. That is a playoff record. So that just tells you how they really blew the Celtics off of the court. And the coach talking about they need to figure out things. I mean, this is ridiculous. And, you know, the other issue, too, he didn't address the issue in the um fourth quarter when Jason Tatum didn't take one shot in the entire fourth quarter of the game, and you wonder why the Celtics didn't win that game. Now, game two, I mean, 
Boston Celtics, again, is a team that is probably the worst team in the league. When they have a lead going into the fourth quarter, they cannot hold on to their league. They become disorganized. They become very sloppy with the ball. They had an 89-77 to lead going into the fourth quarter, and they lost the game. They lost the game because they just could not perform productive minutes in the fourth quarter, whereas the Miami Heat, I think what it is, the Miami Heat is number one in clutch performances where the Celtics are just about last in clutch performance. And it proved, again, the Heat outsmarted, I'm going to say, I'm going to say outcoach in that fourth quarter. He, they definitely did outcoach, uh, Spolster Spol, definitely outcoach Missoula in that fourth quarter again. And, of course, the big thing, I mean, everybody said it was a big thing, but, you know, it was a big thing because Grant Hill did poke the bear. He he woke up Jimmy Butler because at the point when Grant Hill started talking smack to Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler was having a decent game, but he wasn't having one of those Jimmy Butler, uh, Hemi Jimmy Butler game or playoff Jimmy game at that point. But my goodness, when he got into that shouting match with Grant Williams, it was over. <laughs> Jimmy Butler went off and the Heat won the game. So, yeah, the Celtics are down two games that they didn't win at home, so now they got to go on the road to at least win one or two of those games. In actual fact, they need to win both of the games. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to say that they can't do it because they've been this. They they've been here before. I don't think they've ever been down to. I can't remember, but they've had to go on the road to win big games. So they 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 are accustomed to doing it. But this Miami Heat team, they are destined. They are focused. They want to win a title for Jimmy Butler. Now, if the Celtics are swept, which I don't think they will be swept, but if they lose in a gentleman's suite, Coach Missoula will not be fired. President Brad Stevens, he knew this coach was a young coach when he hired him. Hire him. Like I said, I think we were texting back and forth, Spitface, and I said that the Celtics darn well should have kept Ime Adoko, and they got rid of him because of some nonsense that was a personal situation, and they should have kept him because I think if they had kept him, this situation wouldn't be, they wouldn't be in this situation that they're in now. He is a young coach, Missoula, but they will allow him to grow this year, but next year will be the telling season. If they don't win anything this year, next year will be the telling season. Now, as far as Coach Spolstra, he doesn't really need any serious props. I mean, everybody always has said – he was a great coach. He's been well-respected as a great coach. Now, of course, when he had Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, they, people would say he was a lucky coach. But you have to understand, this current Heat team has gone to the finals in the bubble in 2020. They, I believe 2021 they got uh, swept by the Milwaukee Bucks. But in 2022, they were, you remember last year, they were one point, well, actually three Jimmy Butler took, missed a three-pointer pretty much at the end of the game, which would have sent them to the finals. You remember, they went to seven games with the Celtics. So, you know, so this team has been here before. That's why everybody keeps saying the fact that the Heat team has all of these undrafted players. But these undrafted players have played together with each other for at least three seasons. So it's not surprising to me. Obviously, I've been a Heat season ticket holder for almost – 20 years, and I decided to give up my seats this year because, you know, I am not a Jimmy Butler or a Kyle Lowry fan, but that's not the reason why I gave up my seats anyway. But I'm just saying, I mean, this team has been together for a while, and these players like Gabe, Gabe, um, I forgot Gabe's last name, but uh, Caleb Martin, all of them, they have grown in the Heat organization, and we all know the Heat knows how to develop players, okay? They know how to do it. Uh, Duncan Robinson, now Duncan Robinson, he hasn't played well, and he has a high contract. Trust me, I'm quite sure Pat Riley is glad that Duncan Robinson's stock has gone high now because he's ready to get rid of that contract because that was the worst contract given. And it's going to be quite interesting. I'm just going to a little take, digress a little bit. It's going to be quite interesting to see if the Heat is going to bring back those undrafted uh, players because – Gabe Vincent and uh, Matt Struth, they are free agents 
at the end of the season. So we already know Pat Riley got burned giving um, Duncan Robinson a high contract. It'll be interesting to see what he's going to do with Max Struess and um, Gabe Vincent. So I have a feeling teams will be getting on, you know, they'd be definitely going to be offering them some money. And the question is, will Pat Riley decide to give them that big contract that they so deservingly look for? But anyway, I, I just think, um, you know, it, it, it's it's going to be uh, – uh, I still think it's going to be a great series. And um, as far as if the Heat get into the finals and the Nuggets, obviously we're going to probably win because no team has ever won four games when they're down 3-0. So the Nuggets and the Heat, it's going to be an interesting matchup because the teams actually are very similar in their style of play. So that's what's going to make it very interesting. But um, I I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But this series is not over. With I'm not – counting the Boston Celtics out. I think they still got a little fight left in them. On paper, they are the better team, but being the better team on paper does not translate to win. You got to do it on the court, and you got to leave it on the court. All right, Spitface, what you saying about this? Okay, first lady. Um, uh, <laughs> first off, the butler keeps serving it up. <laughs> He keeps serving it up at the right time. And uh, you had said something about poking the bear. Hey, like they say, don't pull on Superman's cape. Don't do it. Don't do it. You will get burned. Um, I'm pretty sure the Celtics wish they could fly far, 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 far away from the whoopings that they've been taking at home. Not on the road. And at home, you getting spanked bad. So that does not bode well for for uh, a, 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 a comeback. <laughs> Sound like somebody about to get knocked out. Now, uh, uh, if it's a gentleman squeak, or if it's a squeak, unlike the the NFL. The NBA is not trying to get rid of uh, young black head coaches. <laughs> uh, uh, the NBA has been pretty good about uh, we'll sit, you know, unless you're just a disaster. We're gonna give you, we're gonna give you a shot. You're gonna get a fair shot. Well, it, sometimes not so fair, but most of the time you get a pretty fair shot. Now, uh, so Missoula. Uh, they understand they're not trying to, uh, to, to to do any further damage to their team with, with a sudden coaching change. Uh, and now it's up to management uh, to empower him and maybe uh, look at some, uh, you know, some, some, some people, some, uh, what they can get during free agency and, and add to the team to, to, to strengthen uh, they hold. So, uh, uh, but next year you 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 get whooped like this, <laughs> you, you, like you said, first lady, Missoula is out. And you know, uh, Spokestra he gives props. Now he doesn't get Greg Popovich props, and he doesn't get Pat Riley props. And he, I mean, you know, and that's the thing is he he plays for an organization that has Pat Riley as the head man. Now, you got a, a, a NBA legend as a head coach, and you got a head coach. So, you know, it, it, it's going to be rough on, on, on hitting props, you know, just, uh, unless you can at least duplicate that. And, and you know, it's like, how the hell are you going to duplicate that? I mean, I mean, you need some serious breaks to be able to duplicate that. But, uh, and then if, I, if, I, if, I, if there is a lucky coach, it has got to be Pat. Uh, it's got to be Phil Jackson. Come on, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Scottie Pippen, and then you go to a, a, a team with Shaq and Kobe Bryant, a, a young Kobe Bryant. Come on, not not not. Uh, uh, I put it like this: You are, are, are very very lucky as a head coach. And uh, that disaster that that uh, Phil Jackson laid on on on, on the uh, on that on the New York organization that, <laughs> uh, that, that I, I, coaching points should get deducted. 
you know, like, uh, we take away a whole ring, <laughs> you know, because of that disaster. That that uh, just, you know. So <clears throat> I, I, I I digress. I digress. But um, again, unlike the NFL, the NBA is not trying to get rid of their black coaches, and especially the young ones who. Uh, uh, they know that you got to groom the coaches like you had to groom uh, 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 young players to, to build the kind of organization. That's why there, there is some longevity uh, in the NBA. And Doc, uh, Doc's going to get, uh, uh, unless Doc says, you know what, I'm tired of coaching. I done done my thing. Let me go to the booth and see if I can make some big money there. Uh, he's going to get another job as a head coach, not as nobody's assistant, as a head coach. And uh, so, uh, like, the, that's a big distinction. In the NFL, who knows? You, you know, <laughs> the, the, who knows? Is anybody's guess what's going on there? But, again, I digress. And, uh, per se, that's all like, oh, and as far as what Dwayne Wade's saying, the way in way to say, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the way in way to say, get him. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, first lady. <laughs> okay. I don't know why you would bring up, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, my, Phil Jackson in my presence. Because you're right. We are angry Knicks fan when we talk about Phil Jackson. Oh, my goodness. He was a great coach, but he was a horrible president of basketball operations. And Spolstra has actually won more titles with the Heat than Pat Riley did. Pat Riley only won one title with the Heat. Spolstra has two titles with the Heat. And um but yeah, I get yeah, he I don't know. I think he's still on that level, uh, uh with Popovich because actually Popovich has had some bad seasons lately. I know but he got that uh Wim Wim Banya Banya, what's his name? <laughs> I had the, that 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 tall seven footer from Paris, France. Uh, now I hope he played better than all the other Paris, um, all the other French players that came over to the United States. We'll see. I mean, um, we'll see. He's you did that like be, French. He's supposed to be a Can generational me. talent, so we'll see how that goes. But you, um, you did not like French. <laughs> Well, no, because the Knicks Timmy, had one of Timmy. them, and uh, we had Frank Nitakina, and he never did anything. <laughs> we could have drafted a couple other people ahead of him, and we could have had Donovan Mitchin, who, who fell after what? Frank Nitakina. Timmy, okay. Timmy, he my man. And don't, don't let me get started with the Knicks draft, because we had the love for French people. We drafted Frederick Weiss back in, oh, I forgot what year that was, that we could have had Ron Artest. And we drafted Frederick Weiss, who never came over to play with the Knicks. And if you remember, his biggest frame was when um, Vince Carter jumped over his head at the um, Olympics game. <laughs> so, so we had never had a good luck with French players. And, of course, we, who else we have on our team who didn't even sniff any court time? That was Fournier, who's from France. Okay, I digress. That's, we're going to use that a lot today. All right, spit things over to you. All right, first lady, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my peers and putting fuckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion, overpowering over the competition. I'm towering. Wrecking shop when I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare, you better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that all get sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm going to knock you out, huh? Mama said knock you out, huh? We are talking about the knockout punch to the ego of Anthony Davis and his LeBron-led Los Angeles Lakers. Are the Joker and company simply too much for the purple and gold? Are the Lakers men outplayed and outcoached? If the Lakers get swept or suffer a gentleman's sweep, is the coach going fishing with Doc Rivers? <laughs> is LeBron hiding his injuries or is Father Mileage catching up with him? Would James Harden make a difference for the Lakers and get them a ring? <laughs> Has this series lived up to the hype battle of the big men? Leroy Satchel Page, 
Walter Buck Leonard and James Cool Papa Bell are asking what you say. Mm, 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 mm. First Lady, there is no way at the beginning of this series that I would have said that the Lakers would be looking at moving into an elimination situation. <laughs> but here they are. And I, 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 I just don't see how they coming back. You know, the, I mean, I mean, it's automatic that uh, I mean, you you three zip, three zip, a uh, hundred and forty nine <laughs> series where the uh, where the the team was three resulted in them winning a hundred and forty nine and zero, so. Uh, uh, and I I see no no way that the purple and gold will buck that trend. Uh, I, uh, now, but what makes it worse? What makes it worse? And and, and Laker Nation, don't get mad. I, I you know look, I, I live in Texas. I'm in Houston. I got to deal with Dallas fans who are perpetually their team is going to win it all. You know, despite any fact, rationale, uh, damn near conspiracy theory <laughs> that they have it, that the Dallas Cowboys go always go to the Super Bowl every year and win it. So uh, I, I don't put you purple and gold Laker fans in that category because y'all like star players. And y'all will go, well, look, you know, you ain't won no championship. I mean, you know, y'all, you know, y'all, you're at least a little discerning. So, uh, uh, but man, I, 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 I uh, I'm looking at uh, Anthony Davis, and look like he pretty much, you know, a mass of points, rebounds. But I, I mean, look like he playing his game. Okay, uh, LeBron, uh, LeBron. I'm, I'm a, 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 I think LeBron uh, got some nicks, aches, pains, whatever. Uh, and and now nah, and, and he's just been so conditioned that he's playing past it. But it is like, hey, uh, a, 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 a ankle twist that during the season he would not play, or they would limit his time. Well, hey, hey it's fish to go home, <laughs> you know. So uh, he's gonna put it all out there, and uh, you know what's gonna happen. You know, uh, how you feel? I feel fine. You know, well, it looks like your your foot, all the foot is good. Well, you know what you gonna do? You know what you gonna do? The man, a superstar, legend. So if he, no, 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 I, uh, I know I said ouch, but that was just you know I, you know, uh, did something, whatever. So uh, he gonna play, but I look at it and I and I go even for LeBron, you know, uh, he he can't turn that up a notch and dominate like he did a few years ago. And uh, it's not by the time, it's by the mileage. By the mileage, they caught up with them wheels. Now, would James Harden make a difference for the Lakers and get them a ring? You know what? As strange as could be, he might be able to. Because he could, you know, they don't, that would be a team where, she does not have to be the player you count on in the playoffs to come up big and win the games. He just, if he in the playoffs, he can come up big once or twice. That could be the difference in a series and get them a ring. So I, I could see this. Now, has this series lived up to the hype battle of the big men? Uh, three and oh, you would think that it didn't. But, man, they've been battling. <laughs> this has been a battle of the big men. Only Denver is kind of going, we bigger. <laughs> you know? So, uh, first lady, what you saying? I, you know, Denver, obviously, um, they they are the better team. I mean, if you got a 3-0 lead, you are definitely a much better team than the Lakers. 
And, um, you know, they definitely have pr- proven that they're a better team. I'm not going to say the Lakers are being out coached. I think Darvin Ham has done a great job, as well as Mike Malone. Um, and, you know, the big question if the Lakers lose or swept or whatever, will they get rid of Darvin Ham? No, he has shown that he knows what he is doing. So they need to have some more continuity um, with Darvin Ham. And considering where he's been with a roster, and the beginning of the season to the roster now, I would say that he's done a darn good job. Now, the the reason why the Lakers are losing is because the Nuggets style is proven to be more effective than the Lakers style. The the Nuggets are a fast paced, run and gun type of team. They got the uh, uh, center in there that can do everything. He can rebound. He can score. And he can pass. He's always a walking triple threat. That's what um, Nikola Nikola Jokic is, a walking triple threat. And you have to say, Murray has just been outright one of the better players on the team. Now, like you said, Spitzface, LeBron and AD really haven't had bad games. And, um, you know, it's just that the Lakers can't not prevent the, the Nuggets from going on runs. I mean, they go on like a 10-0 run, 15-0 run. I mean, they go on these long runs, and the Lakers have to come back from these runs, and the Lakers are an older team. Yes, AD and LeBron are showing signs of the games, you know, the fact that it is a, um, you know, the games are like every other day, so that's going to impact LeBron and Anthony Davis more than it will the the um, Nuggets. So, yes, I believe Father Mileage is catching up to LeBron, and I also think he still has a foot injury. They said most people wouldn't have come back from that foot injury, so he does have a foot injury, and it's still affecting him. Uh, but I'm not saying that's the reason why the Lakers are losing. The reason why the Lakers are losing is not because of LeBron and not because of AD. The reason why the lo- uh, the Lakers are losing is because Jokic and Murray just have been far superior than AD and LeBron, and the Nuggets others are outplaying the Lakers others. So that's the reason why Denver has a 3-0 lead. And uh, they just, you know, they, every time the Lakers come back, the uh, Nuggets go on a, a fantastic roll. It happened again in the fourth quarter of game three. The Lakers fought. They was down by 15 points, I believe, or 15-14. They fought to get even. They 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 uh, took the lead for a hot second, and then next thing you know, the Nuggets went on this fantastic roll again, and that was the game. It was over. They was hitting their three pointers, and that's why they lost the game. So they just cannot stop those those um, uh, stretches where the Lakers are not scoring and the Nuggets are scoring at a fast pace. And, um, you know, uh, I, I, again, I just don't think um, um, James Harden could help the Lakers. I mean, he couldn't even help the darn Sixers. And so why would I think he could help the Lakers, Spitzfather? I know you said, but you think he would. No, we already the Lakers already got a ball-dominated player in LeBron James, even though LeBron James really has not been that type of dominant uh, ball um, carrier that he usually is. Usually he he runs the offense, but they had um, um, Delan- De- D'Angelo Russell, who is their point guard, even though he's been horrible in this series, to be honest with you. he went, I don't even think he sniffed the court on the fourth quarter. He, he played the second half, and many of the um, – Analysts thought he shouldn't even start the second half because he has just been, I mean, really bad. When you look at his plus-minus numbers, I mean, they're double digits. And when I mean double digits, they're in the 30s, negative in the 30s when he's on the court. And when he's off the court, positive in the 30s. So that's really saying something about D'Angelo Russell. And he's trying to get a new contract. So I don't know what's going to happen with him at the end of the season. But um, I just think um, – James Harden would not be a good fit on this team. And as far as the big men, they have uh, – it has been a um, a good uh, contest between A.D. and Jokic. It's just that, you know, 
Anthony Davis obviously is a better defensive player than Jokic, but Jokic is a better offensive player right now. But they have been dueling. I agree with you on that, Spitface. They definitely have been dueling each other. But the reason why, again, the Nuggets are winning is because they have the two best players on the court. That is Jokic and Murray, Mm. and that's the reason why Mm. they're winning. Oh, the te- uh, thanks, lady. The two best players of the court, and and one of them is not named LeBron. That in itself says a whole lot. All right. Well, first lady, or, or, or on that note, LeBron, look at that retirement package. <laughs> first lady, please take us to break. <laughs> Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have a performance from my favorite, one of my favorite (laughs) male singers, Will Downing on Shout Out Part 1. The music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel. First lady, I can't wait to hear the music from Will Downey. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. And today we are featuring Will Downing, who is not new independent, but... He's been around from Brooklyn, New York. They say Grammy-nominated R&B veteran whose rich voice and sophisticated mix of soul and jazz with a career that spans over 36 years and 26 albums, Will Downing is one of the most versatile and loved voices of our time, known as the Prince of Sophisticated Soul. Now, I didn't know that. That's news to me. But anyway, DJ, let's hear Make you mine. Best day. 
you make my life worthwhile The missing piece to make my whole life First lady. Okay. All right. That was Will Downing. I'm sorry. I was just so mesmerized by Will Downing. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit caught up there. All right. All right. Well, I don't know about you, Spitface. You know, I already, you, like you said, I was a little biased to begin with. So I'm definitely going to shout out Make You Mine. <laughs> it sounds like a typical Will Downing song. And it was smooth. And his voice is Still, after all these years, still sultry and sexy. All right, I'm shouting out. You shouting out, Smith Face? Yeah, I, 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 but of course I'm shouting the brother out. Now, that, that, there was this uh, one part in the song where he said, uh, uh, make you mine again. Now, see, what that was for, for those who, 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 who might have missed it, see, sometimes you got to make what's already yours back to being yours again, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, as they say, what it took to get her or to get him, uh, you don't just be stopping, you know, oh, well, you know, now that I, oh, no, it it don't work like that. You you, you got to come up with a new program, you know, <laughs> so you got to keep making her mine or making him mine, you know, so uh, I, I just thought I'd throw that little, little tid bit out there, but the brother was smooth, see, baby, you want to go out on a date, too. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm looking at. I'm looking now. Let's see. You know, maybe I will make a phone call, get some wine and some bread and cheese, and do something. You know, we can sit, you know, get some popcorn and watch the game. You know, maybe we want to hook up right now. Get Netflix and chill. All right. Okay. All right. On part two of shout out, we'll feature another track from Mr. Will Downing. However, is that the sound? Of our favorite underwater friend, is it time for Flip It? All right, Flipper is ready and, and ready and set to go this morning. It's time for Flip It, where I hope to defend a point and then flip the script and defend the opposing view. Now, we mentioned <laughs> this player earlier. James Harden supposedly wants to come back to H-Town. Should the Rockets make that happen? Defend. They need veteran leadership, and Harden is still a stupid superstar. <laughs> Bring him back. Uh, it looks like things didn't quite work out in Cheese Steak City. 
the the town of brotherly love. It don't quite think looks like things really worked out for Harden being in the Eastern Conference. He uh, most of his really good success came well, you know, with the Rockets, but uh, was in the Western Conference, Oklahoma, Houston. Then he went out, you know, all up east trying to, you know, be fly, you know, act like he's somebody. And ain't, ain't Jack done happen. So I could see him saying, that home cooking down in H-Town was good. That nice hot weather was good. People, the bearded one, that nostalgia set in. He's like, look, I want to come on back and I got more in the tank. And that's why I want to wrap it up. Now, the Rockets have a young team. And as they rebuild and do the work to get, get back to some type of relevance, they need some veteran leadership. And who else? But the beard it was. He got props. He done done the thing. And he is still a superstar. He is still a superstar. And since you don't have to count on him in the playoffs, <laughs> with his young emerging team, bring him on back. First lady, the fan. Well, the Rockets are, like you said, they're a very, very young team, and um, they really do not have a player that can bring leadership. So bringing in Harden would be a great addition. And, you know, the thing is, too, Harden is more of a true point guard than what they currently have in Jalen Green. And um, I forgot the other guy's name. I think it's Chris. I can't remember his last name right now. But uh, Jalen Green is their superstar and he needs to learn with um, James Harden next to him. And uh, But, you know, the thing is, James Harden would have to be the current version of himself, not the former version when he was playing in Houston before as that Houston Rocket player. He cannot be ball dominant because the Rockets have a very talented um, core of players you know, they got Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, K.J. Martin, and even their center is excellent, Sangoon. Uh, they just, they're a very talented team, very talented. They can score with the best of them. They just don't play defense. But the other thing is they lose games in the fourth quarter a lot of times, and that's the problem. That's where having a leadership from uh, James Harden would definitely help them because they are, you know, they do have a lot of turnovers and a lot of inconsistencies, even though Harden is like that himself. But, that, but at least he'll be able to solidify their offense with leadership. So that's the reason why I think it would be great for James Harden to go to H-Town, and they need to make that move right away. All right, first lady, you say they need to make that move right away. But, you know, this is flipping, where we flip the script and defend the opposing view. So we're going to defend. He is a superstar, but not the right fit for a team trying to create an identity. Something that was mentioned was that you would need James Harden to be the current James Harden, the James Harden who is not ball dominant ain't going to happen on the Rockets. There's just too much history, too much giving Harden his way for that to happen smoothly. And with Harden on the team as a, as the quote, veteran leader, well, in his mind, veteran leader means give me the ball. <laughs> Let me show you what to do. And for a team trying to create their own identity and build upon, uh, he's not the right superstar. And, you know, superstar, right now, uh, superstar, they need a homegrown superstar, not bring in somebody uh, uh, who you're going to have to pay.
you know, maybe not, might not get, you know, might not have to pay him the ton he he got previously. But you're going to have to pay. So that's going to hit hit your salary. And, uh, again, uh, don't see James Harden not being ball dominated. Dominating. Just don't see that happen. Uh, there are veterans who are, quote, not superstars who would probably be better fits on that team and help the uh, and really help mold the younger players so that so that superstars arise. So uh no, do, do not be uh, James, if you want to come back and you know, you want to uh get some gumbo, fine. You're welcome. <laughs> But, uh, uh, no, we don't need you on the Rockets. First lady, defend. <laughs> you say we don't need James Harden on the Rockets. Yeah, I mean, James Harden is a superstar that currently needs to repair his image on the basketball court, not off the court, like John ja Morant. <laughs> John ja Morant needs to repair his image off the court. <laughs> like, Harden oh, just needs no. to repair it on the basketball <clears throat> court. But, however, in order for him to repair his basketball image, he needs to be that ball-dominating James Harden from his previous stint in Houston. This current team doesn't need that type of player. They don't need someone who is going to control the offense and dominate the offense and take all the shots and give them shots when he feels like giving them. They need someone with leadership who can make their current players better. Unfortunately, Harden really has never been able to make other players around him better. And he, you know, especially if he goes to the older Harden, uh, you know, he, he plays, unfortunately, selfish basketball. And he's going to need to play selfish basketball in order to rejuvenate his career. It's just the way it's going to be. So he is not a fit for this team. This team, again, has a lot of great core players. They just need someone to help them out. You know, I hate to say it. You know who they really need? But I don't know if he's going to be coming back. He may come back because he got a contract if he gets um, if he gets traded. They need Chris Paul. He's the quintessential <laughs> point guard that the Rockets need. I think Chris Paul would be better with this version of the Rockets than he was with the other version of the Rockets when he played <laughs> alongside of um, uh, James Harden. I, I, I really think that, um, no, this is what they need. They need somebody like Chris Paul, someone who will bring leadership. It's not going to be James Harden, you know. So, Houston, you got a problem if you sign James Harden. <laughs> well, on that note, First Lady, please, please take us the break. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned. Up next, our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. <laughs> the bearded one. Welcome back. Welcome. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports, Butt Kicking, where we look at all things in the world of combat sports. We'll return after the NBA playoffs. Sorry. It's time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It Part 2. Victor Wimbanyama is, there, is the consensus number one pick in the NBA draft. But who will be number two between Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson? Panel, defend. It's Miller time. All right, Spitface, defend. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for Brandon and for Scoot, when Banyama is the consensus number one pick. Because without him being in the draft, the argument would be Miller or Henderson. But as that worked out, 
and they ended up being the uh, now they're in contention for the number two. It's you know it, it, it's really going to be a challenge to decide which one is going to be the one. And I think the uh, the issue that a team will have and taken with Scoot is that if Miller ends up being fantastic and Scoot ends up being quite not so good, somebody might have egg on their face. Now, Scoot has some certain advantages. His main advantage is he got a name called Scoot. You know, you know Scoot gonna do it. Scoot, get on out there, Scoot. Scoot on out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's already in his favor. But at the end of the day, coming from a hip place, it's hey, military. <laughs> you know, the champagne, <laughs> military. So, in, in a close competition, you got to go with Mella time. So, first lady, I'm rolling with Mella. All, all right. Saying. That's all you're saying. You're rolling with Miller. Well, I mean, Scoot, in the beginning of the, you know, when they start looking at the draft pick, Scoot actually was the consensus number two because, like you said, everybody knew Victor Wimbanyama Yama was going to be the number one pick. It was just a matter of, who was going to get him? And, of course, the San Antonio Spurs, they have a knack for getting big men in the draft. All right? You remember they got um, the Admiral, and then they said, you know, they got the fundamental, Tim Duncan. You know, they had a bad season, and they were able to get the, um, um, du- um, Duncan in the, um, the number one pick. Now they had another bad season, and look who they got, Victor Wimbanyanya. I don't know. I think this is a fix. I think the I really think the NBA wanted him to go to the San Antonio Spurs. It was amazing. That, you know, I don't think that, as far as I'm concerned, this draft is not this the the lottery is not working because again, the team with the worst record is not getting the number one pick. As a matter of fact, the Detroit Pistons, if I'm not mistaken, I think they slipped to either number four or number five, and they had the worst record. So it's not working. But anyway. Let's get back to this this conversation between Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson. Well, again, like I said, Scoot was the consensus number two at the start of the season, but there's been people leaning more towards Miller as the number two. I think on the, most of the mock drafts, they have the Charlotte Hornets picking number two, and they're going to pick Miller. And it makes sense for them to pick Miller because Miller is a wing who can create for himself. And the fact that the Charlotte Hornets already have a point guard that they are not going to get rid of, that's LaMelo Ball, who is a, you know, he's not a great three-point shooter. And some of the problems with Scoot Jackson, not not Scoot Jackson, excuse me, Scoot Henderson. (laughs) I knew I was going to say Scoot. It's Scoop Jackson, not but his name is Scoot Henderson, the problem with Scoot Henderson, he is a little bit undersized as a point guard, and he cannot shoot the three-point shot. Now, he is um, not really um, that great of a shooter. So, to be honest with you, he will struggle with shooting three. So, I mean, what are you going to do? He's going to be the number two pick, and you're going to have him sitting behind LaMelo Ball? I mean, you're not going to get rid of LaMelo Ball. I just unfortunately don't think that both of them can play together because you need some more shooting. Now, LaMelo Ball is more of a dyna- dynamic guard, point guard, than Scoot is. But to me, it would be a waste for the, uh, the Hornets to get Henderson and have him playing behind LaMelo Ball unless you plan to – to trade LaMelo. Now, yes, LaMelo has been hurt for two consecutive seasons now. So, man, you never know what's going on. He had a bad ankle sprain. If I'm not mistaken, he had a 
he did a broken arm or something prior to that. So, um, you know, so maybe they will consider him, but I don't think they would. I think they need to go with the uh, with Miller. Miller is the quintessential forward in today's NBA. He is a stretch four, stretch five type of play, not five, stretch four type of player. He can shoot from the outside. So that's what they need. They need shooting. I wish he could. I wish the Knicks could go and grab Miller. I mean, he he he's a good shooter. And he's a a, a power for who can play a wing, who can play defense too. So to me, it is Miller time. All right, but this is where we flip the script. Scoot, there it is. Scoot, there it is. All right, spit face defend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, uh, would Henderson be a a, a fit with Lamelo? Uh, they would fit in just fine. They could both share the rock, and moving Lamelo off the ball here and there will lead to more catch and shoot situations, which is something he really hasn't able, been able to do uh, a lot of in his first three seasons with the club. Henderson, okay, can get to the rim <laughs> to compensate for Melo's inability to consistently finish at the basket. And on the other hand, Melo's shooting efficiency makes up for Henderson's shot making, which is still a work in progress. Now, Ball, unlike his daddy, is an unselfish player. He don't need the ball in his hands all the time, James Harden, and neither does Scoot. So, you know, uh, this might be a match made in heaven. That's what I'm saying, First Lady. Okay, a match made in heaven. Well, yeah, because you have to look at the match. Now, it would be difficult for LaMelo Ball and Scoot Henderson to be paired up in the backcourt together. But you want to know, like you said, Spitface, it can work. Hey, if people didn't think Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland, two small guards, could be in the backcourt together. And guess what? It worked just fine for them. Unfortunately, it didn't work for them against the, it didn't work for them against the Knicks, but it worked for them. They did get fourth place in the um, Eastern, Con- Eastern Conference uh, at the beginning of this, you know, as far as before the playoffs. But Scoot Henderson is a crafty player that can get to the rim. He's not a great outside shooter, but he can at least get to the rim. So you would have a double, a double threat between Scoot Henderson and Lamella Ball as far as driving to the basketball, um, back to the lane, penetrating, kicking it out to the other shooters that they have. And they can play off of each other, yes, because they can do pick and roll between the two of them. And even though both of them are a little bit difficult when it comes to shooting from the outside, there's other ways to score. And you would want more of the guards to penetrate, to kick it out to the other players to shoot. And that's what both of them can do. And uh, Henderson, even though he is a small guard, he does play great defense. He can, you know, he does a lot of stealing the ball. So I look for them to um, to to draft Scoot Henderson, and uh, they need to have a backup because Lamella is always injured too. That's another issue when it comes to Lamella Ball. He's been injured lately, and you just unfortunately you have to have that backup uh, point guard and. Um, I just think what's happening with the Hornets, um, Terry Rozier wasn't great at the point guard position. So that's where Scoot Henderson can come in. So, you know, Scoot, there it is. Scoot, there it is. It's there for the Charlotte Hornets to draft him, and that's what's going to happen. All right, Spitface, please take us to break. All right. On the other side of the break, we have another performance from Will Downing on Shout Out Part 2. Please keep those ears on those speakers and stay tuned. Welcome back 
the music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the crew. Spitface, over to you. All right, all right. We have another performance from Mr. Will Downing, the Prince of Sophisticated Soul. <laughs> DC, let's have, let's hear Love on You. Love on you. 
is the track getting the shout out or the mute button? You know, uh, uh, before I, I, I check in with First Lady, uh, Will, you and your freaky self. <laughs> now, <laughs> Will, you ain't nothing but a big freak. You know, uh, yes, you is. You just just letting it out a little bit, a little bit there, just throwing it all on the line. Now, the other thing is, is that, you know, uh, sometimes I look at the, the younger generation and uh, uh, I feel like they're kind of missing out on some guidance. See, uh, when you have singers like Will Downing and, uh, and other folks who tell you what to do, you could just put the album on, listen, and follow some directions. You know, you know, uh, uh, a lot of the newer stuff, yeah, shoot, you try to figure out what it is, you know. So, but uh, 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 I'm giving the song a shout out. Uh, we'll see how uh, particular the first lady is. First lady, what's the verdict? Oh well, I'm definitely shouted. I actually like the second song better than I did the first song. And uh, <laughs> and you know what? I just love the fact that he was doing a little rapping, but his rapping is, you know, it was that sexy type of rapping, not no hardcore rapping in the song. <laughs> I like that part there. That that was nice how he did that. He he added that little flavor to his music. I don't think I ever have a song with him, Will Downing, doing that particular thing in it. So I, I enjoyed it. Definitely shouting it out. I, I guess that's why he's the prince, a sophisticated soul, and to borrow, and to borrow a line, smooth talking with a rap so sweet, the ladies call him the candy talker. So... <laughs> <laughs> we'll just roll with that. Now, that is the end of Shout Out. If you like what you heard from Will Downing, check him out on the PrinceOfSophisticatedSoul.com. That's the Prince of SophisticatedSoul.com and the Old Grumpy Radio Network. If you would like to be heard or have any comments, please, please, please send your emails and tracks to talent at OldGrumpyRadio.com. First Lady, over to you. Okay, it's time for the hard wood picks, and let's go over some results. So currently we have the results from the first round and the second round results. Haven't gotten in any of the third round results yet. A little the, the production crew is a little bit behind. All right, so anyway, so let's get to uh, the first round results. Um, Spitface and me, we both had 500,000 points. Dizzy Mac had a negative 500,000 points. Oh. Uh, for the second round, uh, I didn't fare too well. I had a negative 750,000 points. Spitface and Dizzy Mac had zero points. <laughs> mm. So, current standing, Spitface <laughs> is leading with 500,000 points. I'm next with minus 250,000 points, and Dizzy Mac has minus 500,000 points. All right, so let's get to the new picks. Um, so we are in um, game... Well, okay, let's do it. It's game four for the Lakers and the Nuggets. Okay, so in game four, Anthony Davis. Um, these are actually uh, uh, props. What's wrong? Not, not, uh, 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 you might want to let them know what we picked for the game three because these are actually props for game three, even though a game got played. We got the picks in for it, though. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Let me um uh, let me see if I <laughs> All right, let me let me just give me a few minutes. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, that's what you well, meant. We just, uh, uh, All right, hold on. Yeah, uh, we can say well what they what they I wouldn't have to give give what we uh put in. <laughs> or Okay. I mean, we could. I I actually have them. I just um, uh Okay. I I actually have them. Give me a few minutes. Let me get to game 3. All right. So, um, actually, it was game, was it game three or game? Game, it's game three. Uh, you know what, I, let me see, okay, that's game, okay, game three, here we go. Actually, 
see, yeah, okay, you know what? You're right. Um, game three, um, it was Nuggets versus Lakers. All right, so we – actually, I don't have those – I didn't put those picks in as of yet. <laughs> that was my mm-hmm. mistake. I didn't put – did we – did we um, – I, I – we already gave okay, our so tickets. For, we okay, already so gave our three. picks. We did it offline, is what we did it. But we right. we already did. So we I, we already did it offline. But I don't have it organized right now. Okay, uh, for uh, uh, for game, game three, uh, for game three, the Nuggets versus the Lakers. Okay, you want uh, you just. All right, you just want luggage. You, you just want me to tell what the game three picks are, even though I don't have right, what we pick. Okay, right, that's, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay, Nuggets versus the Lakers. Um, so the prop from game three is Anthony Davis over, under, or push thirty five points. LeBron. Okay, and James, I went with under. Right, that's what I was trying to tell you. I don't have those. Right oh, okay, but, but but I first lady, I got them, so I'll go okay, ahead you got them. Go ahead. All right, okay, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'll you go ahead and play. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, we can. Okay, for the game for game three, and we realized Nuggets Lakers already played, but what we put in was for the game three. Uh, I went with the Nuggets. Okay, and the first lady went with. Let's see. The first lady went with the Lakers, and Dizzy Mack went with the Lakers. Okay. Okay? Now, for game three, the Knicks versus Heat. No, it's not the Knicks. It's not, I've been Knicks crazy, not but the, the Celtics, Knicks, versus, the Celtics <laughs> versus the Heat. <laughs> right, the Celtics <laughs> versus the Heat. Now, I went with the Celtics, and first lady went with the Celtics, and Dizzy Mack went with, with the Celtics. Okay. Now, the props, and those are uh, plus or minus 500,000. So it's big point. Things are going to be shaken up uh, after this weekend. Now, the props for game three, uh, Anthony Davis, uh, and this is over under push, 35 points. I went with the under. First Lady went with the under. Dizzy Mack went with the under. For LeBron James, three rebounds. I went with the over. First Lady went with the over. And Dizzy Mack went with the over. All righty. For the the Joker, over under push, 35 points. I went with the under. First Lady went with the under. And Dizzy Mack went with the over. Dizzy Mack went with the over. Okay, all right. For, oh, Jamal Murray. For the first round, uh, Jamal Murray. Uh, over under push. Uh, 22 points. I went with the over. First Lady went with the over. Dizzy Mack went with the over. Jimmy Butler over under push five rebounds. I'm going with the push. First Lady is going with the over. First Lady is going with the over. And Dizzy Mack is going with the over. For where they go, where they go? Okay, Kevin Love over under ten points. I'm going with the over. First lady is going with the under, and Dizzy Mack is going with the over. Now the uh, where go, where go, where go? Okay, 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 okay. I got Jason Tatum. Over under 30 points. I'm going with the over. First Lady is going with the over. Dizzy Mack is going with the under. Hmm. And then Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brown. Un- <laughs> Jalen Brown. Which one? Jalen Brown. Brown. 
Brown, Brown. Okay, Jalen Brown, the over-under, push, 22 points. I'm going with the push. First Lady is going with the over. And Dizzy Mac is going with the under. And we will... uh, 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 so that was our, our offline picks to, to to bring it bring us up to date, first lady. Okay. So we're up to date. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get to our top stories. Um, you know, the top story of the day is the passing of the legendary running back and activist Jim Brown. Uh, he's Surely will be missed. He was one of the greatest running backs of all time. He only what played nine years, I believe, uh, and you know then he left to become an actor. And uh, he was always an activist, you know, always fighting for um, people's rights. And um, he is truly to be commended. And he lived a very important life in our population, you know, you know, when it comes to pop pop culture and the sports culture, he was just more than an athlete. He was one of those athletes on the lines of Muhammad Ali and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and, of course, the late, great Bill Russell. Did they have anything you want to say regarding Jim Brown? Yeah, you know, uh, when you look at the, the videos of Jim Brown, and you think of uh, the guys he paid, played against on defense. And these was, ooh, ooh. Uh, you know, and the fact that there were so many things that you could do uh, that today they don't allow. You know, because it, it the sport evolves and safety. And, uh, so it, it's just miraculous he had that type of career. And the fact that he did something so few professional athletes could do, and uh, given uh, 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 the times for a black person, literally amazing. He was at the top of his career and said, nope, I'm going to go do something totally different, and I'm going to be successful at it. You know, And success is like dollar bill, baby, dollar bill. So he left the NFL at the top of his game went into an acting career. And part of the reason he left was they gave him a choice. They said, look, either come and play football, uh, uh, you know, or you have to make a move. And he said, I'm going to make the move. Uh, not because y'all are demanding it, but I get y'all need me to be here, but I'm on this uh, movie set. And I see this as the, as the future, and I don't have to take no hits. I don't have to, you know, be called racist names in stadiums. I can just deal with it, you know. Plus, at that point, uh, he was becoming more and more uh, uh, of an activist in the uh, uh, in, in the world. And uh, back then, the way the NFL was set up, it, you know, was. Uh, that wasn't the place to be. I'll put it like that. And uh, I think people would be really surprised at how much uh, activist he really was. But what I really, really appreciate about Jim Brown is Three the Hard Way. That was just one of my favorite movies. That's <laughs> all I'm saying, first lady. <laughs> okay. All right. And um, also definitely have to give a shout-out to Brittany Griner, who uh, returned to her first game back to WNBA. Obviously, Brittany Griner had spent many months in Russia prison as she was illegally detained, and um, this was her first game back. Um, you know, the um, WNBA opened up their season. It was on Friday, and Griner um, returned to a standing ovation from the, the crowd, and uh, she put in uh, she poured in a team high, 18 points with six round six rebounds and two assists in her return. Unfortunately, the um, Phoenix um, Mercury lost to the Sparks, the Los Angeles Sparks, 94 to 71. But it wasn't because of Brittany. Brittany really played well, considering that she really was out for so long, 
and she pl- missed the whole season last year. So kudos to Brittany Griner. She's back in action, and we're just so glad to have her back in the United States. And there was a lot of issue about it. She did stand for the national anthem, and she was proud to be American. All right, join us as we honor our veteran women and veteran women with disabilities. To learn more, please visit honorourveteranwomen.com, honorourveteranwomen.com. Check out our current and previous episodes at bras, panties, and sports.com and our Facebook page, BP and Sports. This is Cheryl Smith, the First Lady of Sports Talk, and Spitface. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. <laughs>